After multiple years and untold hours of televised propaganda, as I predicted virtually from the outset of this fucking farce, the Cosby case... cratered. <laughs> meant to make a Cosby case video for a piping hot fucking minute for at least the last two years, in fact, which is frankly as much an indictment of my outright procrastination as it is of the nebulous nature of the facts of the case. Not to mention the Judge Dredd fucking show trial Bill Cosby was ultimately given. Let's just say this at the outset. Everyone is entitled to a fair and impartial hearing. Well, everyone not named Derek Chauvin. While I will always assume innocence without adequate proof, having never been among the women in proximity to Cosby during the alleged events, I can never really know for a mortal fucking certainty whether the events occurred or didn't. Although, as you'll see, some of the Cosby allegations were later proven irrefutably in court to be rank fucking fabrications. What I do know is that Bill Cosby didn't receive a fair trial for a fifth of a fucking shit. An immaterial matter, you say? Utterly irrelevant, so long as justice was served, you enjoy. Not so fast, simp. Because as I've learned from the West Memphis Three, or the more recent railroading of John Schaefer for the insurrectionist activity of pointing a fucking finger, there but for the grace of God, Go you! If one of the wealthiest men in the world, a fixture in American homes who damn near bought NBC with pocket change, could get reamed by a runaway judiciary spurred by media-manufactured Me Too hysteria? <laughs> what in the fuck chance do you think you have, asshole? And folks, believe me when I say Cosby couldn't have been railroaded any harder if John Henry had prosecuted his ass in a courtroom caboose with a drunken Amtrak conductor presiding, but... Let's head off the obvious idiotic rejoinder making the rounds on anti-social media before we peel this onion, though, shall we? He wasn't proven innocent! He was only released on a technicality! So long as you don't count the first trial, which was so utterly incriminating and conclusive, the jury wound up more hung than Ron Jeremy. Yet in spite of obvious exculpatory evidence and an evidently tainted jury pool, the retrial went ahead, and this time, friends, the fix was well the fuck in. What's the technicality they claim tipped the entire apple cart exactly? Well, after Hannibal Barres's cancerously unfunny ass proffered his Bill Cosby is a racist remarks in a comedy special, touching off the initial dogpile of Pavlovian payola seekers, the original district attorney in the case investigated the first accuser's claims outright and thoroughly and found them without motherfucking merit. And I'm not talking he specked that bitch was lying on old Cosby, yo. I'm talking Tuesday comes before Wednesday, you weren't where you said you were and neither the fuck was he. Time and fucking place, exculpatory evidence. In the first trial, the woman that they allowed to testify, it was based on a time frame and, and apparently went back, I believe, like to 1996, but when she testified, it reverted back to actually 1990 was the date. And then in the second trial, for whatever reason, he just went back to 1982. Well, uh, the judge allowed women to come in to say they'd been improperly treated by Mr. Cosby of allegations that are, you know, going back 30 years. Right. Allegations that were never made at the time, uh, that were never, in my opinion, properly investigated. And suddenly you're cluttering the trial with these accusers. Disproved the claims. Out Fucking right, think the broad who claimed just in time for the 2016 election that Donald Trump had groped her in coach class on a flight on the wrong airline that there's no evidence Trump ever fucking took. Why is this fact pertinent? Because Cosby's innocence was so persuasive to the DA, he formally declared he would not prosecute, and he had to do this before Cosby would agree to record a video deposition. Yes, folks, it was that fucking deposition. The video everyone says proves Cosby's guilt because he admitted to giving women drugs in the 70s when lewds and Spanish fly were voluntary fucking party drugs. The entire context of which was never once explained to the court case that wasn't legally allowed to happen when they screened the deposition that was illegally admitted into evidence. If you consider two simultaneous constitutional rights violations preceded by a DA finding no compelling case to even fucking prosecute to be a technicality, then sure shit. 
a dick. He was released on a technicality. So what happened? Simple. Me too motherfucking happened. Or rather, the prototypical strains of what would ultimately metastasize into me fucking too. And the incumbent activist politics therein, might I add. To comprehend how Cosby went from cleared to riding the rails, you have to understand Philadelphia's permafucked political class. Here's the thing, folks. The DA who investigated and cleared Bill Cosby on the original accusation, he has to run for re-election like every other asshole under the yellow sun. In the earliest days of the controversy, when the Cosby accusations were only just transmogrifying into a revisionist SJW shitstorm, the DA faced a stiff fucking electoral challenge from a man who campaigned largely at a platform of cuffing Cosby. Still no cause for alarm, you say? Well, put yourself in those campaign ads and ask yourself again how much you'd appreciate the fucking gesture. That man, luckily, loses. Joy and rapture. Justice wins the day. Except that then, that man becomes the judge in Bill Cosby's butt-fucking trial. I defy you to make this shit up, folks. And I've been trying for 20 years death cases in Alabama. Uh, I handled a capital case in Mississippi. I've handled cases around the country. This was the most unfair trial from day one. I, I, can't, I still can't believe this kind of stuff was allowed to go forward. The DA made an agreement with Mr. Cosby not to prosecute him, told his lawyers he has no Fifth Amendment privilege not to testify because I'm not going to come after him. I, I agree not to do this. And that DA has testified under oath that I agreed not to prosecute him. Uh, when that DA ran for district attorney, it was a very bitter contest with another opponent mm -hmm. who turned out to be the judge in our case. Mm. So all of a sudden, the defense makes a motion to throw this case out because the DA at the time made an agreement not to prosecute. That DA testifies under oath, that's correct, I agree not to prosecute him. And his old bitter political opponent, who's now the judge, says, I don't find him credible. Wow. So that's how everything begins. Wow. Utterly ridiculous. Yeah. Fortunately for the Honorable Judge Shitbag, a close personal friend and longtime political ally of his was soon to run for district attorney in the following election cycle. And if Judge Shitbag's campaign featured a light peppering of pudding pops and promises of prosecuting Cosby, the new guy was wall-to-wall anti-Cosby lynch mob material. Tainted jury pool? Surely you jest! promising that day one he would move forward with an all-new trial and prosecution whether the previous prosecutor had signed a binding document saying no evidence was found and no trial could move forth or not! So a judge who promised to prosecute Cosby presides over a trial prosecuted by his pal in direct contravention of a previous order not to fucking prosecute! By which point, he'd already recorded the infamous deposition that should be illegal and inadmissible, but given that everyone was arguing Cosby's guilt on goddamn Twitter is directly quoting from it these days, fucking obviously, it was admitted into evidence illegally anyway in direct violation of his constitutional rights. What constitutional rights? Good goddamn question, talking head on the internet. Well, because the original DA said there was no case, Cosby was not afforded Fifth Amendment fucking protections against self-incrimination prior to its recording, in direct violation of the Constitution and nearly a half dozen other laws and court provisions, the deposition was entered into evidence and, in fact, became the apotheotic evidence in the entire titty fucking trial. The deposition that he was told he had to, had to take because he wasn't being prosecuted is sealed. And then another judge decides to unseal it. A federal judge. Federal judge, exactly. And a federal court of appeals basically says the judge didn't act properly, uh, but it's too late. So suddenly that deposition that was supposed to be sealed becomes evidence in the, in the case. That's absurd. Beginning to see why this shit got tossed like a tampon applique, the previous DA, understandably pissed at the prosecution of a case he'd already investigated and fucking cleared, offered to testify in the case to explain what he discovered and why the women in question were not credible. The judge in the trial, who I'd remind you, had lost to this very same prosecutor in a previous election, declared him a hostile fucking witness and had him removed from court. What political motive? And if your nose is not yet keen to the scent of horseshit, perhaps the involvement of Gloria Allred will engage your olfactories. 
the same way she did for the Trump accusers who disappeared the minute after the election was over, and of course Michael Jackson's blackmailers, Gloria Allred was once again the great big red flying unfurling flag eternally atop Mount Money Grab. Atlanta Braves pitching coach Roger McDowell is accused of simulating sex with a baseball bat in front of children at a Braves-Giants game. The parents of the children hired attorney Gloria Allred, who held this press conference. We'll also be uh, doing a little demonstration of exactly of what the coach did. Wait, what, what, wait? <laughs> a, a demonstration? That's not a good idea. Aren't those the same girls? I'm no psychiatrist, but I have a feeling that this will remind these little girls of two days ago when that guy did it. Don't make them watch it again, Gloria Allred, please. I'm panicking for nothing. She's a lawyer. Of course she knows what she's doing. She'll figure out. I think Justin and I can demonstrate what was done with the baseball bat. Okay, so Justin, you want to come forward here? And why don't you put your fingers up the way he had them? Okay, so then it was like that. He's going like that. Is that right? Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. What? How long does she keep bat sexing that guy's hand? That's... Oh. Wait, what? No. Is this for the people who missed it the first time? Oh. Please. Look, I didn't go to law school, but I don't believe lawyers do this. Now, throughout the trial and its Weimar German sequel, Cosby was often depicted in the press as quiet, evasive, withdrawn, as if he was ashamed or had something to hide, in some way uncertain, the implicit suggestion being that it was some kind of indicator of his underlying guilt. In truth, so committed was Cosby to his unflagging innocence, he was offered and rejected a plea to a lesser misdemeanor charge sans jail time that would have effectively swept the entire sad episode under the rug entirely. He turned it down just to maintain his fucking innocence. Name one motherfucking muckraking journalist that reported this fucking fact in the press, let alone weighted their hyperventilative coverage with it. I'll fucking wait. How about those sons? That's what I fucking thought. Oh, but they were goddamn giddy at the prospect of reporting unproven and often outright false hearsay, such as the since disproven allegation that Cosby, quote, joked about having committed the fictitious fucking crimes. Not only did I predict that it would be overturned, after I began hearing reports of the actual occurrences in the courtroom, I was frankly flabbergasted it wasn't declared a mistrial out fucking right. To which all too many will reply, but look at all the accusers! I mean, my god, there's 60 of them! Where there's smoke, there's gotta be fire! Evidently you've never driven a Yugo. But you're right, that's when the dogpile truly fucking commenced, eventually tipping the scales at 60 entire accusers. And that is a terrible thing to rely on as an indication of his guilt, because the one who arguably touched off that avalanche was supermodel-turned-sausage-casing Janice Dickinson, whose lurid accounts of being accosted by Cosby at his residence were Lindbergh baby kidnapping caliber fodder for the shit heels in the press. The, the, the res unresolved issues due to rape b from Bill Cosby, I'm just starting to exhale at... And I will say this, I, you know, I, I, I sobbed all weekend, not just for me, for what's going on with these other women. I'm in huge gratitude to the Los Angeles Police Department, you know. Thank you guys and gals out there. You know, it's about time that this guy gets his cup up and... Prior to Dickinson disengaging her temporal mandibular and weaving her fucking fantasy yarns, there were two entire accusers, at least one of whom had already been vetted, investigated, and found to be fucking false by the prosecutor. After Janice Dickinson, 
There were 60. Oh, and then I mentioned that Janice Dickinson, under cross-examination by bona fide attorney assassin Tom Mesereau, outright admitted to fabricating her fucking story to shield a fucking book that she then suckered some of you retards into actually buying, because that's kind of fucking important here. Because without Janice Dickinson, you're left with accuser number one, who was thoroughly investigated and found to be incredulous by the previous DA, Accuser number two, who hitched her wagon to accuser number one, thereby discrediting her entire story in the process. And of course, accuser number three, Janice Dickinson, who admitted to lying on the fucking witness stand. And the argument of the social media mongoloids is that because 57 other women then piled aboard the Blackmail Express after a celebrity made a knowingly and proven false accusation against Cosby and haphazardly attempted and failed to maintain that facade under oath, this somehow makes the case against him more fucking credible? Come again, asshole? I've seen games of cards against humanity with more consistent internal logic. Oh, and hey, I mentioned jury tainting earlier. As a complete hypothetical, of course. Did I happen to mention that a juror who left the trial later testified that one of their fellow jurors uttered the words, Cosby is guilty, and quote, we won't have to deliberate long. Before the trial even fucking commenced, the judge, even being informed of this fact by the departing juror, declined to remove the other juror, so long as we're on that subject. You just might want to keep that in mind. Or what about during the testimony portion of the case, when two separate witnesses turned to the jury in a simultaneous, obviously coordinated attack and shrieked the words, You know what you did to me! And Bill Cosby is a rapist! which in any other courtroom on planet Earth would end in an automatic mistrial or prejudicial conduct declaration, yet our good buddy, the judge, with zero sociopolitical motive, as we all know, refused to grant a fucking mistrial. And hey, let's rap about that judge, shall we? Unremittingly impartial, swing ass cat that he is. Turns out, his wife was up to her implants in the Me Too movement to the extent that she literally donated to a group that planned an anti-Cosby protest outside the courthouse. Her own husband was theoretically impartially weighing the fuck in on Natch. Then there's the fact that the case itself was fucking illegal to begin with. No, not merely because the previous DA had promised not to prosecute due to a lack of evidence. Turns out the entire three-ring shit show of a court case wasn't even filed in time, which under normal, sane, non-Philadelphia fucking circumstances would mean all accuser testimony would have to be discarded as inadmissible. There was a very valid defense that this case had not been filed in time. And, uh... We made a motion to that effect, requested an evidentiary hearing. Judge wouldn't grant the evidentiary hearing and wouldn't rule on the motion. He said, I'll send it to the jury. Uh, by law, he had a right to send the jury what is called a special interrogatory, where they would have to decide, did the prosecution prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this case was filed in time? Judge wouldn't do that. He read a jury instruction to the jury to the effect that they must find beyond a reasonable doubt that, that the prosecution timely filed the case and never sent that instruction into the jury room. To skirt this technicality, the judge went ahead and skipped an evidentiary hearing, meaning virtually any accuser could clamber up to the bench, no matter how incredulous their accusations, sit on Santa's knee, and state their fucking case. Sight unseen, no vetting required. Because everyone knows the statute of limitations is really more of a fucking suggestion. In Mr. Cosby's first trial, the trial judge, um, allowed one additional accuser, not the main accuser, uh, to testify against Mr. Cosby. Uh, that ended in a hung jury. Then you have the Me Too movement roaring through society, uh, very powerful, very emotional. So the movement takes off and we have a retrial and the judge decides to allow not just one other so-called accuser, but five. He ups the number from one to five. These are people that Mr. Cosby isn't even charged. It never has been charged with doing anything improper to. So the judge won't give any reasons. 
Uh, he just decides to up the number from one to five. If you can swallow all of that bubbling bullshit and still assert with a straight face that Cosby got even the beginnings of a fair trial, my congratulations on your commitment to the principle of your own crippling fucking stupidity. The justice system didn't convict this man. Justice wouldn't return this courtroom's calls. Judge Steve O'Neill had it barred from the fucking courtroom, in fact. Any members of the Razor Force who may be proximitous to this paralegal Punch and Judy show in Philadelphia, please, by the beard of Thor. Get the front flippin' fuck out of there! I wouldn't trust Pennsylvania's permafuck court system to arbitrate a fucking kickball match. If Bill Cosby had no chance, God forbid you should find yourself at the mercy of this glorified fucking murder machine. You don't just need to fix some shit, Philly. You need Norm Abrams, Bob Vila, and the whole ass This Old House crew to tear this shit down to the foundation and erect it all over again. What a gut-busting goddamn farce. But what sends me in a spasmodic fits to rolling laughter is that a shocking number of you full red-pilled pissants who fancy yourselves so unstumpable, so undeviatingly attuned to the habitual deceptions of the Prov de Press, swallowed this shit sandwich whole and are actually pissed he was released. And some of you vapid fuckers still won't admit you're wrong. Subsisting in a more comforting deception is inevitably more agreeable to your sensibilities. Well, bitch, the truth ain't agreeable and neither the fuck am I. Fuck you! I was right! Razor Fist, out! then allegedly said, are you three giving it to each other up the, and he used the word for, uh, crude word for rear end. Wait, what, rear end? <laughs> now Gloria's getting all demure. <laughs> rear end, not like earlier when on. she was, no, don't show it again. No more!